Unfortunately, in my recent match against Adam, I tore my rotator cuff on my dominant arm. And I did it by repeatedly hitting backhands in a poor, inefficient, ineffective way. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how it happened. We're gonna do a deep dive, do some analysis here, show you the technical reasons why that injury occurred. This is critical. If you take your tennis seriously, you want to play better and better tennis, and you want to avoid injury, then you have to watch this video. We're gonna start off by looking at some world-class one-handed backhand examples really quickly. And I'm just gonna point out two positions for each of them. So here's Federer. Big thank you to Love Tennis uh, channel for this clip. So we're gonna look at his back in his coil position as he gets set up to hit the ball. Look at how it's almost parallel to the baseline. And we're gonna also look at his hand and his arm and his racket and how far back his racket is. His racket is al also, as he coils and his racket starts to drop, parallel to the baseline. His, his back here really is probably about facing his target. And you'll see that as he uncoils and hits, but this is actually a pretty fascinating example for me to watch. Look at the direction, see the shadow of the, the ball here? Look at the direction that the ball travels. It's about in this or so direction. See the angle of the, the ball shadow there? So this is the angle that he's hitting on. This is a, this is a cross court shot. And look at how much he's coiling in preparation for this shot. So what does that do? It loads the big strong parts of his body so that when he uncoils into the shot, those smaller parts of his body can be more passive and come along for the ride and just guide the racket instead of having to do the hitting of the ball. So that's an example of Federer. Really quickly here, let's look at an example of Dimitrov. So check out his coil position, his setup position here. I would say he's a little bit past 45 degrees relative to the baseline. If you look at his shoulders, the angle of his shoulders as he sets up here, he's, he's turned rotated, coiled a little bit past 45 degrees relative to the baseline. His racket in his hand, look again, close to parallel. And again, this is a cross court shot. So his racket is being pulled from around the back of his body with a big uncoiling of his hips, his torso, his shoulders, his chest. And that's the power source, the primary power source for the shot. Again, a cross court shot. All right, let's take a look at Vavrinka. He's gonna be a little bit less coiled than both Roger and Dimitrov. So check out his shoulders here. I'd say he's just about 45 degrees relative to the, the baseline, maybe a little bit shorter than that. But notice how his hand and his racket still get back around his body, the back of his body, a little bit short of parallel. So he, he doesn't make quite as much turn or coil with his body. It's kind of similar to how his serve. He doesn't make as dramatic or uh, aggressive of a coil with his, his chest and his torso. But again, like you can see, like look at this, the squeeze here in his butt as he uncoils and pushes and drives forwards. The vast majority of the strength and the power and the, the energy going into the ball, it's all coming from, from this. His hips, his torso, his chest, unwinding and pulling the racket around into contact. Okay, one more really quickly. I took uh, Shapovalov and made him a righty here. We're gonna right we're gonna rightify everything here, including myself. So check out his coil position, his setup, past 45 degrees here with the shoulders. Look at the racket position, parallel behind him, and so everything from there. Look at the huge firing with the hips here, really early with the hips, and then his torso, and then his shoulders, and then the arm comes along for the ride. It's not that his arm is totally you know, passive and not doing anything, but it's pretty easy to see that the, the primary power source is the big, powerful, stable parts of the body, and the arm is much more secondary. All right, so keeping those two positions in mind, let's look at some examples of me training with Mike Trice. And I, I, just to make everything apples to apples, I've made myself righty here, so everything looks the same. So look at my coil position. How far do I get? At best, I'm 90 degrees. I'm probably a little bit short of that. And how far back does my racket get? Duh, it's, it's so much shorter, right? And so there's so much less strength and stability for the big parts of my body to be involved and to unwind and to uncoil and really create 
the power, create the energy behind this shot. So what has to do work? If the big parts of my body aren't going to be very supportive and aren't going to be doing the bulk of the work, what has to work instead? Well, it's got to be the smaller parts of the body. This is where all tennis injuries come into play. Now we've got two shots here. Again, maybe best case scenario, I'm 90 degrees, but I'm probably a little bit short of that here. We'll get the position of my racket. Doesn't really get behind me at all in this one. And now watch what I do. This is the most important part of the entire lesson here. Watch what I do next. I've, after missing that shot wide, watch the shadow swing. Oh, yeah, see? So I'm reminding myself in between repetitions, this is where I want to get to. Now, all of a sudden, I'm to a full coil position and I'm looking like Federer. Like my chest is just, I'm sorry, my back is just about facing my target, which is cross court. A racket is completely behind my body. And now from here, I can uncoil with my hips, my torso, my shoulders. And this is where I want the power source to be coming from. It's from the big, stable parts of my body. Then Mike feeds me a ball. Guess what happens next? I'll give you, I'll give you one guess. Guess what happens next? I go back to 90 degrees at best. That's probably my best one. It might be, it's a little bit past 90 degrees out of, so immediately after reminding myself, I go a little further and I probably thought I was doing a full coil, but in reality, this is way short, right? And so this is the, and it, it is my best one. See, my, my racket at least is a little bit further back behind me. Now my old backhand, where I came from, when I started working on rebuilding this shot, <clears throat> was the butt cap of my racket was totally pointing the ball the whole time. So the fact that I sometimes coil enough to actually have the racket come from behind me and around towards the ball is an improvement. And my backhand's gotten a lot better in the last year and a half. But it's easy to see that in, even in training, I oftentimes fall short. Now, some backhands for my match against Adam. A match where I drove more backhands than I've ever driven before in a match situation. And many of you were super supportive, complimentary, and I appreciate it. And it's the best I've ever hit my backhand in a match. But look at the body position and look at the racket position. So what has to be doing the work here? The body's helping, but this isn't anywhere close to the position that I want to be in. And so my arm has to do a lot of the hitting. And that puts a lot of stress and strain on the shoulder. And so backhand after backhand, this one is especially uh, painful for me to watch. Here's a return of serve. Short of 90 degrees. And as I hit, my body's not even turning at all. So this is 100% being powered by my arm and my shoulder. Racket's not making it around the back of my body. Like my body is not uncoiling or un unturning into the ball at all. Unturning, I don't know if that's a, that's a word. But backhand after backhand, that was the position I got to. And so my arm had to do a lot of work. And so over the course of a two hour match with Adam, I hit backhand after backhand after backhand from this position using my arm. Now, I hit some great shots. I hit a couple winner backhand drives. I've never done that before in a match on the Essential Tennis Channel. I was really proud of that and I committed to it. And this is really important, like key concept I wanna get across is my backhand has improved. It is better. I still have work to do. And because of that gap between where I am now and where I need to be, that's why this injury took place. Swing after swing, I got to a weak core position, a weak coil position, had to use my arm to bail me out of it. <clears throat> and when you do that repetitively and aggressively, that's when small parts of the body get inflamed, get angry, and start to break. And so I now have a tear in my rotator cuff because of that. And I don't know how long it's going to take to rehab it. I'm pretty confident I'll event, I will get back to, to full speed again. And this is just more than ever motivating me. I, I have to continue to work on it and improve on it and learn and rewrite that old habit. Remember, without a ball coming towards me, I get to a fantastic coil position. The fact that when a ball is coming towards me, I go back to a weaker position, even though it's better than before, 
is just a perfect illustration and lesson here that shows the power of old habits. Remember, I did my old backhand for 25 years. 25 years, I got to an, an even weaker position than this, which is why I just sliced my entire competitive career. So this is a big project, and I'm okay with that. I'm fine with it taking longer. I, I like the progress that I've seen. I like the improvements on the court that have already happened, and this just tells me that there's more work to be done. It's unfortunate, and I, you know, I wish I didn't hurt myself like that. Uh, the next day, I wasn't able to, to pick up a glass of water. Uh, I wasn't able to do my turn signal with my left hand. I had to reach over with my right hand to do turn signal because I, I couldn't raise my, my left arm in this direction because it was from doing this motion with my arm without the support of my torso, my core, uh, uncoiling. So bottom line here is if you don't want to get injured, do more with the big parts of your body, less with the small parts of your body. If you want to be a better tennis player, do more with the big parts of your body, less with the small parts of your body. I will continue to give you updates to continue working hard on my own and also continue to show you lessons of me showing my students how to do this. For me personally, it's still a work in progress and that's just part of the game. That's the way it goes. So I hope you learned something in this lesson. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave those down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next lesson.